the first major subject we're going to look at is the concept of pressure and how do pressure how does pressure relate to fluids well we're going to define this quantity it's actually going to be a really useful quantity for us for fluids and really all it says is that the pressure on a area or the pressure that's felt is the force that's applied perpendicular to an area. So if we have, say, a box of water, and we look at some area that's in it, well, the amount of force that's applied on this particular area, perpendicular, we have to remember that it's perpendicular, is going to be equal to the pressure that's applied over this area. Well, you ask why why when we have area and uh, force do we use pressure? Well, pressure tends to be more useful because when we're talking about fluids, we're not talking about one particle or three or four particles. We're talking about millions and billions of particles interacting all at the same time. So when we look at fluid dynamic, we're going to look at many particles all at the same time, and we're going to try to figure out what the bulk motion is going to be and not necessarily just what individual particles are doing. So we're going to try to take averages and pressure is a very good quantity that we use to figure out what is uh, what's going on in our system. Well the unit for pressure is a Pascal and if you had to take a guess it's a Newton per meter squared is what one Pascal is. So one Pascal is a Newton per meter squared or a force per area. You may see other uh, pressures. We like to use the Pascal because it's an uh, SI derived unit, but there are a bunch of other ones that show up over and over again. So one atmosphere is a very common thing to see. It has uh, 1.0133 times 10 to the 5 Pascals. So one atmosphere is what we live under most of the time or close to it. So what does that work out to be in SI units? There's another unit of bar. Um, so 1.0133, you'll notice that these have the same number, except for there's this factor of 10 to the fifth difference. Uh, one of my more favorite ones to use is millimeters of mercury. It's a classical one because of how we measure pressure using uh, well, old school or, um, mercury barometers. Um, I prefer TOR, it's just a unit that I use quite a bit. And if you ever work on a car, PSI is going to be uh, one. This is pounds per square inch. So there's a bunch of different ones, and you have to be careful when you're doing problems to make sure that you are using the correct uh, unit. Most of the time in physics, you want to convert stuff into Pascals because Pascals is a base or is a derived SI unit, but it is an SI unit. There's one other quantity that comes up a lot with fluids, and that's the idea of density. It's the mass of an object per unit volume. Again, this is another one of these quantities that we like to use uh, because it deals not only with just individual particles, but it deals with kind of a bulk motion, bulk quantities. And it is a, one of these quantities that doesn't matter how much of the subject, uh, how much of the object you have, the density will be uniform for a different size. Well, how do we come up with pressure? And let's see what we can come up with with pressure. Well, the first thing is, is if we take that diagram we had before and we look at the what is the pressure on this little orange square if it's sitting in a fluid. Say we put a fluid in this whole area. We just look at some little postage stamp size area in here. We ask, what's the pressure on it? Well, the pressure that's on it, if we just look at this, pressure on it can be divided up into, or the this problem can be divided up into a couple regions. The regions outside, since we're dealing with a fluid, we don't have to worry about this outside stuff because of that shear force uh, part of the fluid. There's a the part below it, and then there's a the part above it. Well, really what comes down to it is the pressure that's on it, or the force that's being applied on this area, is equal to the amount of liquid, or the amount of fluid that's above it, or it's pushing down. So if you think about this as a postage stamp, this is like a weight of books, but our books just happen to be a column of water or some fluid. 
we also know that the net force on this has to be equal to zero. So if we look at the weight force of this column of fluid up here, it has to be equal to an upward force from this little postage stamp size area. But we know how to calculate the mass of an object, so we don't know necessarily what the mass of this fluid is, but we know that it has a density. For water, that density is one gram per cubic centimeter, or a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. So we can go and go, well, this, this guy has an area, you know, this is a cube of some sort, a rectangular cube. It has an area and it has a height. So the volume, A times H, times the density will give us our mass. We keep the gravity, we keep that pressure below. So we can rewrite these formulas in terms of the pressure below, pushing up on this thing, and the downward force of the fluid. So the pressure below is, or the force below is equal to the pressure times the area, again just using our definition of pressure, and we'll see that the area on this bottom plate right here is equal to the area of the base of this cube. It doesn't matter what shape we're using, it could be a square base, it could be a circular base, it could be any type of area that we look at. However, it will drop out and we get our first useful quantity for pressure. And the first pressure that we get is that the pressure of on an on some point at some depth. So we look at how far below the surface of the fluid we are and that depth is going to determine what the pressure is. There's also the quantity of the density of the fluid itself. So we look at the fluid that we're in. If we're sitting at 10 meters under water, 10 meters under water will give us some pressure. If we're looking at 10 meters under say alcohol, it's going to have a different density. 10 meters under mercury, this density is going to be really high, we're going to feel a lot of pressure. If we go to deeper depths, we get a larger pressure on us. So if we double our height underwater, our pressure due to that water pushing down on us will double as well. 